Today I have the second part in my series on writing indicators. In the first part I showed how to create a basic indicator. It was an ATR channel which showed a midpoint line and an upper and lower line to the channel on screen. Today I'm going to be showing how you can create a single line indicator that changes color. And in this case I'm going to be showing a line that changes to green when we've detected an uptrend and red when we detect a downtrend. Now the particular formula I'm using for this isn't very reliable, it's just to show you how to draw the line with the changing colors. I'm going to be using the code from the earlier video, so if you haven't seen that already, I'm going to be skipping over a lot of the detail of how that works, so you might want to go back and see that earlier video, and I'll leave a link in the description where you can find that. This video is for MetaTrader 5. I have a separate video for MetaTrader 4, and there'll also be a link in the description for the MetaTrader 4 video. Now I have the indicator on screen. It has a red line here changing to a green line, then back to red, and then to green. Uh, let me just remove these bars so that it's a little easier to see. Okay, so you can see the line changing color. The formula I'm using is just an example formula. I'm simply taking two moving averages, calculating the midpoint of those moving averages, and then depending if the fast moving average is above the slow, I have a green line, and if the fast moving average is below the slow, I have a red line. I'll actually add those two moving averages in here just to demonstrate. So now I've added in the two moving averages. The fast line is this white moving average, that's a 10 period simple moving average, and the slow is this yellow line, which is a 50 period simple moving average. And you can see that where these lines cross is where the color changes. If you look closely, and I'll just try to zoom in, at this point you can see that the color actually changes before the lines cross. That is simply because the way MetaTrader draws this line, it changes to the new color at the midpoint of the candle where the old color ceases. Maybe if I put the candles back, you can see that the red line begins in the midpoint of this candle. So it actually begins to become red, although we don't have the cross until this candle. And the same thing here when it changes back to green. It changes to green at the midpoint of the candle just before the cross happens. That's just the way the line's being drawn. So this changing color line is what we're going to be drawing today and you'll see in MetaTrader 5 how to create this changing color line. Now I've opened the MetaTrader 5 editor and because I'm basing this on the earlier ATR channel indicator I've simply taken a copy of this entire folder, this ATR channel folder that I've placed under Orchard. I've copied that into a new folder called Midpoint MA and I've just renamed the file so this Midpoint MA.MQ5. And here's the ATR channel and I've just got the midpoint ma.mq5 and this is an exact copy so far. I've made no changes to this file. So first thing I'll do, I'll just change that comment. And then these properties can remain the same. First change, this property indicator plots and indicator buffers. This indicator will draw a single line on the screen so I only need one plot. And this is a point where MetaTrader 5 actually handles this type of indicator better than MetaTrader 4. So I need a single plot, just change that to one. But I do need two buffers. One buffer will hold the values of this line and the other will hold the colors. That'll become a little bit more obvious as I get to that point. So two buffers and one plot. I'll just get rid of this upper and lower line now because I only have one plot so I can delete these. Now the indicator color, because this is a two color indicator, I'm going to put two colors here. I'm still going to call it main. The indicator style is still solid, so I just want a solid line. But instead of just draw line, this is a draw color line. Which is a particular type of line that was introduced in MetaTrader 5 that actually allows the line to change colors. I'll change the inputs because for the ATR channel I needed a single moving average and the ATR, but for this I need two moving averages. And I'm just imaginatively calling those the fast and the slow moving average. And the fast moving average is called fast because it has a smaller number of bars, or at least that's how I'm designating it here, it has a smaller number of bars, therefore it reacts to price changes more quickly. 
I've set both of these to a simple moving average. You might choose exponential moving average or you might have one simple and one exponential, doesn't really matter. Point is these are two moving averages for this example. For the buffers, I still have buffer main that will hold the values of the indicator, but I don't have an upper and a lower. What I do have is a color. And I don't need the third buffer. Now these handles, these were handles to the moving average and the ATR indicator. Now I have two moving averages called fast and slow, so I'm just going to change these variables. So now I have a handle fast and a handle slow, and then the values fast and slow in arrays. I'm going to replace this where I was previously simply setting the index buffer based on buffers 0, 1, and 2 to the three arrays that I had. Now one of these buffers has values and the other buffer has colors. Uh, and I'm also going to be using array setter series. So I'll just replace these six lines. So buffer number zero has the values and that's the buffer main and that is of type indicator data. But buffer number one is the buffer color array and it is of type indicator color index. And then I set both of them as series, buffer main and buffer color set as series to true. In these lines, I'm going to replace handle MA and handle ATR and the call to IMA and IATR with two calls to IMA, one for the fast and one for the slow. I'm going to set both of the values arrays to series with true, and then I'm going to be testing handle fast MA and handle slow MA. So there I have handle fast MA, handle slow MA. They are both IMA just using the fast and the slow variables. Array set a series and testing handle fast MA and handle slow MA. Here in on dnit, I still need the indicator released for the two indicator handles that I have, but now they are handle fast MA and handle slow MA. In the on calculate function, I have this same section to determine how many bars I need to calculate for. And then I need to change these copy buffer statements because the two handles have changed. So copy buffer handle fast MA into values fast and handle slow into values slow. In both cases, I'm testing that I received the right number of values back. Then what happens inside this loop is going to change quite significantly. So I'll just delete everything there. And the first thing I do is capture the values. So for each value of I, I want to get the fast and the slow value, which I'm just getting from those buffers or from those arrays from values fast MA I and values slow MA I and then I need that midpoint value this MA here which is simply fast plus slow divided by 2 is the actual line that we're plotting it's not a wonderful indicator but it's an example of something that you can create and it will have a red and a green component depending whether we're in a downtrend or an uptrend and so this MA is the actual value that I'm going to be plotting on screen and plotting that on screen is just the same as it was before. All I have to do is assign this value to the buffer, to buffer main in position I equals MA, and that will put that line at that price in this bar on the screen. But now I need to set the colors of that line depending whether we're in an uptrend or a downtrend. So I'm gonna have a conditional statement. If the fast is greater than the slow, so fast is the value from the fast moving average and slow is from the slow moving average. So if the, in this case, 10 period is above low, which is the 50 period, then I'm going to have one color in here. And if not, so if the fast is less than or equal to the slow, then I'll have the other color. And to set the color, all I need to do is assign an index value to the color buffer. So let me scroll back up. We have this color buffer, buffer color. It is also resized with buffer main. So it has one element for each element of buffer main. And I just need to indicate which color I want at that position I. So if the fast is greater than slow, then buffer color I equals zero. That zero is an index. Let me scroll back up again. Sorry for this movement. Is an index into this array of colors. So position zero is green and position one is red. So with this statement, if fast is greater than slow, 
I'm saying that buffer color position I is green. And then in here, I can say buffer color I equals one, which is the second color, which is red. And then I just return rates total. And this is all I need to do to change colors and have a two color indicator. Let me compile that. And that compiled, no errors. Hello, this is future me dropping in because I forgot to tell you something as I was demonstrating this indicator. If you want to use the values from this in an iCustom, say in an expert advisor, then you can certainly query buffer number zero, which will give you the values. Indicator buffers here are two. And if you remember here, we have buffer main, which has the values of that line on the screen. But if you want to know if you're in an uptrend or a downtrend, there is no value for the uptrend or downtrend but you can query the color. So this buffer color actually exists. And I've written a script to show how you can do that. Here's my test script. I've set up a handle to the I custom symbol period. And here is the name of my custom indicator. I didn't bother to add any of the other values because I'm just using the defaults. So that sets up a handle to the I custom. I'm declaring an array where I'm going to hold the values from that and I'm calling array set as series as normal. And then I'm calling copy buffer and I'm copying values from zero up to 50 from buffer number one. And that's important. If we go back here, buffer number zero is the main buffer that has the actual value that you want. But if you want to know whether it's uptrend or downtrend, buffer color is buffer number one. And so by querying that, buffer number one, I'm going to get the color. Now I won't get the actual value of the color as in, as I had over here, green and red, green and red, but I will get the position. So I'll get either index zero or index one. And then I'm just calling a print format on that running from 30 to 50. And I've chosen that range because when I've got it on chart, it actually changes from red to green in that space. And then I release the indicator handle when I'm finished here with this test script. So let me just flip over to MetaTrader 5 and I'll run the script and show the output from this. Here in MetaTrader 5, I'll make that a little bit bigger because I'm going to be printing 20 values in here. Here's my test script. Here's the indicator on screen. What I want to do is capture this point where the line changes between green and red. And if I go from here backwards, I'll see that that happens at bar number 35 and then changes back at 39. So if I run this script, test, index number 30 is zero. When we get to 36, it's one. So at index 36, we have the red color and then it changes back at 39, back to a zero. And that's what you're looking for. So you can query which position color you have, you just can't get the actual color value. And that's because it's possible to change these colors. If I right click here and go to the indicator list, call up the midpoint MA and go to colors, I can edit these. And so you simply can't get that value of that color back, but you can tell if you're in the up color or the down color. And so that's a quick example of how you can create a multicolored indicator in MetaTrader 5. You can have more than two colors. You can just keep adding to colors here. I think you can have up to 64 different colors. Uh, and if you wanted to have more than one line on screen, then you can simply duplicate the color buffer for each of the lines you want to add to the screen. If you found this useful, please click the like button. And then if you click subscribe, you'll know when we release new videos. Thank you for watching.